students we are come back with the lectures in the lecture series on course material of transportation engineering 2 in the previous lecture we discussed about uh, uh, the various controls which are needed during navigation and then we have also discussed about the factors which we consider while selecting any airport site as well as while deciding about the size of any airport in continuation of the same, the another feature which is of importance is to look at the type of the development which is taking place on the sides of any airport. We have seen during the consideration of site selection that it has its significance. In the light of that, in today's lecture, we will be discussing about the airport obstructions. The airport obstructions will be discussed under the following headings, the airport obstructions the imaginary surfaces, the height of objects in the approach zone and the turning zones. Apart from these, we will we'll also looking, we will also be discussing about the various types of the flight rules because we have seen in the previous lecture that it also has its effect in terms of the airport capacity. The flight rules which we have discussed there were the instrumentation, instrument flight rules and the visual flight rules and we would like to see how they are different from each other and what they are. So, we will be starting with the, the airport obstructions now. These airport obstructions basically are those obstructions which are provided on the sides of the airports which are related to the type of the development which has taken place on the sides of the airport and are related mostly with not only with the nature of the development, but also with the height of that development. On the basis of that, they can be divided into two categories, which are imaginary surfaces and objects with actual heights. So, we will be discussing the two cases that is imaginary surfaces, where we assume that uh, there can be any surface which may come up to this level and therefore, we have uh, and just marked some surfaces on any airport by which the uh, aircraft should move at the above of that particular surface only and if, if it is coming below of that surface then it may be uh, hazardous. Whereas, the other cases with the actual conditions where the type of the development is going in the vertical direction then what is the height of that development and uh, what can be the height in the light of the operation of the uh, aircrafts on any airport. So, we will be starting now with the imaginary surfaces and then we will be going to the uh, surfaces where the objects are provided with the actual heights. In the case of imaginary surfaces again there are different type of surfaces which we will be looking at and these imaginary surfaces are basically established surfaces in relation to the airport and to each runway above which no obstruction should project. That is what it tries to speak out. That for each and every runway on which the aircraft is going to uh, land or from where it is going to take off with respect to that one, then we start looking at some of the imaginary locations in a space which are assumed to be surfaces and the aircraft follows those surfaces. So, that there is no obstruction projecting within that much in that area of navigation. And this size of imaginary surface depends upon the category of each runway and the type of approach planned for that runway. So, these are the uh, factors which will basically be creating an effect on what type of imaginary surface of what magnitude of that imaginary surface is to be provided or assumed or any of the runway strip on any airport. So, that is going to be controlled by the uh, runway strip itself, what category of runway strip is being provided and then with respect to that the uh, aircrafts which are going to use that uh, runway on the basis of that what type of approach is to be planned. Now, in this case the very first one is that uh, we have to look at the approach surfaces, then the other surface is the conical surface, then there is a horizontal surface then there is a take off climb surface and transitional surface. So, we will be looking at all these type of masonry surfaces and how they are provided and what are their use. This is one big diagram which is trying to show uh, the imaginary surfaces. 
here at the center of this one with this blue area that is being depicted by A. This A is basically the primary surface. Uh, this primary surface means so this is we can assume that this is the runway strip being provided on any airport and alongside this runway strip or the primary area we have shown the uh, marking this is a parallel line going on this side and a parallel line going on this side which probably shows uh, the shoulder conditions and that is the total width of the runway strip being provided at this location. Out of this one then slowly and slowly the rest of the surfaces keep on coming out. So, in the direction of this runway strip we will be having uh, this location that is D and this D is nothing but this is the approach or departure uh, surface. So, this is approach or departure uh, clearance surface being provided here that is uh, this one this is uh, horizontal and we also have uh, another one which is uh, on this location which is basically at an angle which is coming from the uh, level of uh, this runway to the level of uh, this one. So, it is in the horizon it is in at an angle uh, reaching up to this level and then it becomes horizontal. Uh, similarly, if we look at the other uh, surfaces like there is a E surface being provided on the side of uh, uh, the runway strip and this E surface is known as the inner horizontal surface being provided. Then similarly, this F, F is the conical surface means so it is a truncated cone. This is a horizontal surface and then again we will be having a horizontal surface afterwards and in between this surface is a conical surface. It is trying to expand in the outward direction. Then we have the surfaces like a surface being provided here, this one and the surface being provided here, these, uh, these are H, uh, this shown by H and these surfaces are the transition surfaces, means that they are trying to provide a transition with from one surface to the other type of a surface. And uh, in between there, there is a B being shown, this B is nothing but it is uh, known as a clear zone which is again at the horizontal level only with respect to this runway strip and it is an extension of this runway strip. So, the runway strip basically remains of this much size along with clear ways and the shoulders being provided on the two sides of this runway strip. So, this is runway strip, this is white shoulder, this is white shoulder, this is clear way on this side and the clear way on the other side. And uh, uh, when we look at this horizontal surface, this horizontal surface is 150 feet above the airfield elevation where there is another G surface which is the outer horizontal surface. This is outer horizontal surface after the conical surface. This is at a height of 500 feet above the elevation of this airfield. Elevation of this airfield means the elevation of the runway strip. And then as we go further away, uh, what we reach is, is that the distance which we have gone away up to in this direction is of uh, 90,000 uh, feet. Uh, that is how we have gone away. This is the circular section will be at that much distance. Uh, similarly, in this side where we are looking at this approach surface which is trapezoidal in shape here, at this end it is a 16,000 uh, feet uh, uh, wider at this particular location. So, uh, all these surfaces we will be discussing one by one just uh, so as to give you an idea that how the various surfaces are and how they are coming out. So, the approach surface is with respect to this uh, runway strip only and in between there is a transition surface and the horizontal and the gliding approach surface. Then there is a uh, inner horizontal surface and there is a outer horizontal surface in between there is uh, of these two there is a conical surface. So, we will be discussing all these type of surfaces. We start with the approach surface. The approach surface is provided at the end of the landing side of the runway that is what we have seen. It is trapezoidal in shape. It diverges away with upgrade as we are going upwards away from the runway strip then it is diverging outwards. So, that is how it is increasing in size. It is longitudinally centered on the extended center line of the runway. So, it is with respect to the center line of the runway uh, it is symmetrical in location. This is another diagram which tries to show you the same of the thing. Here the runway strip is being provided at this location if we go in this direction the runway strip is provided. So, that is the level of the runway strip. 
out of this after this one there is a clear way and then from the clear way there is a gliding surface which is going up and while it is going up it is expanding. So, this is a divergence it is this much wider here, but this is this much wider this location. So, it is expanding outwards and then once it goes up to the certain level it becomes horizontal. So, that is the type of the surface which is provided and this is what is a uh, approach surface. On the side of this approach surface this gliding angle as we can see comes to this level after which the horizontal surface will come and then after some distance again there will be a conical surface and then again it will become horizontal. So, this this things also you can be visualizing very easily in this diagram where it is shown in the 3 D form. Then further in the case of this approach surfaces the some of the specifications have been laid down here where this is length of horizontal projection of surface in meters and longitudinal upgrade in percent. And these are provided for uh, the two conditions that is ILS condition and non ILS condition that is the uh, instrument landing system condition and non instrument landing system condition means the landing is being controlled either by the instruments or it is not being controlled by the instruments it is a simple visual condition in those cases what are the values. So, it depends on the type of the airport for with respect to the category of the airport these values are for A it is 15,000 for ILS and 3,000 for non ILS whereas, uh, the upgrade is 2 percent or 2.5 percent respectively for the two cases. Then for B it is again remains the same value uh, throughout then for C again there is uh, the same value in the case of length of horizontal projection, but in the case of longitudinal upgrade it is 2 percent and 3.3 percent respectively for ILS non, non ILS condition. Then for uh, category D uh, for non ILS condition it is uh, being defined as 2200 meters, uh, whereas uh, for the longitudinal upgrade it is uh, 4 percent and for E it is 16,000 and 5 percent respectively. Further, uh, we have the another thing that is the width near the end of the runway and the divergence of sides in percent. Now, that is what we have seen at the end of the runway the width of this approach surface remains the same as equal to the width of the runway, but then after that as it diverges uh, then how it is diverging and how much percent it is diverging that is uh, we will be looking the width is in the ILS condition for A category of airport it is 300 and it is 150 meters for the non ILS and it is diverging at a uh, 15 percent rate in ILS and 10 percent rate in non ILS condition. In case of B again it remains the same as we have seen previously also it was same for C also this remains the same for D it is 80 for non ILS and 10 percent for divergence value and for E type of airport it is 60 for non ILS and 10 for the divergence of sides. So, this is how the values are changing for the approach surfaces. The another type uh, surface which uh, is again the another imaginary surface used during the flight of any aircraft is the take off climb surface. Uh, this is uh, similar to the approach surface and it is provided at the takeoff end of the runway. That is sometimes in the case of the runway we use the two ends for a specific uses like one end is used for landing and another end is used for taking off. So, it means in this case if the at that per place where the taking off is going on then we provide the takeoff climb surface and this surface also is trapezoidal in shape. And uh, there are certain specifications with respect to the type of the airports A, B, C, D, and E. It is the width near the end of the runway 8 meters, it is 180 meters uh, in up to C, and 80 meters for D and 60 for E categories. Then divergence of sides, as we have seen previously, it is 12.5 percent here in the case of A, B, and C, and 10 percent for D and E category. Length of horizontal projection in meters, it is 15,000 meters up to C and 2500 meters for D and 1600 meters for E and longitudinal upgrade is 2 percent up to C and it is 4 percent for D and 5 percent for E. So, that is how the dimensions of this takeoff climb surface which is again uh, trapezoidal in shape are fixed and with respect to these particular upgrade rates and the length in which it is moving. So, if it is if we assume it like this that this is uh, the size 
of 180 meters at this level and we are going away like this in this direction, then if we move 15,000 meters, then after 15,000 meters, if we keep on going at a rate of 2 percent means uh, for all these 15,000, for every 1,000 meters, we are increasing 20 meters in height. So, if we are, this is 15,000 meters, it means 2 percent of this will be 300 meters. So, by the end of 15,000 meters, it will rise to 300 meters and then at that location, because it is going in the outward direction diverging. So, the size will be defined again on the basis of this value that is 12.5 percent for every 100 uh, and the, it becomes wider by 12.5 meters. So, this is uh, another diagram where we are trying to show on the same sort of the conditions in the composite form that is how it is happening that this is the air for uh, runway strip, this is the clear way, then it is increasing in dimensions like this. So, that is a variation trapezoid form going upward also as well as it becoming more wider at this side as we go away. So, this is 15,000 meters on horizontal and at this point if we take the height like being shown here, then it will be 300 meters and then at 12.5 percent rate it is coming outwards in this direction and in this direction. And similarly, we can see the elevations being shown here. This is going up or going up like this, then it becomes horizontal. So, this is a transition phase which we can see at this location a small one or we can see a bigger transition phase area facing us, this one H. And then after this again it becomes conical. So, it is rising, we can see the height at this side and then it becomes horizontal. So, this is a conical surface, this is a horizontal surface. Now, we look at the horizontal surface. This horizontal surface with, uh, extends from the upper edge of the transition surface, that is what we have seen and it ends at the lower or inner circular edge of the conical surface because just after the horizontal surface, if we look at uh, the initial horizontal surface, then at the end of this one the conical surface is starting. The height of uh, outer horizontal surface extends from 150 meter above the ARP elevation. This is the airport reference point ARP. For every airport, there is a reference point uh, with respect to which the elevations are taken and that is known as ARP elevation. So, with respect to this, it is 150 meters above and, and it extends to 9900 meters for the airports with the length of runway between 900 meters and 1500 meters, whereas it extends to 15,000 uh, uh, meters, it is uh, uh, 1, 0 coming extra, it is this like well, this is not this way and this is for airports having runway length more than 1500 meters above the elevation of airport reference point. Uh, then. Uh, uh, in the case of the same horizontal surfaces, this uh, shape of this horizontal imaginary surface that is HIS, uh, it is uh, may or may not be circular that is uh, the shape because it is a transition between the tra uh, trapezoid shape being provided by the climb up surface or by the approach surface and the conical surface. The radius of our outer limits are measured from the airport reference point that is again ARP and these are not provided for airports having runway lengths which where it is less than 900 meters and the structures having height above OHS are not permitted that is outer horizontal surface. If there is any structure which is going at the uh, height above than OHS that is outer horizontal surface and those are not allowed. Then uh, we come to another imaginary surface that is transition surface. This transition surface uh, uh, again is uh, trapezoidal in shape and it extends uh, along the landing strip and it slopes out upwards and outwards to the uh, in inner side of the that is inner horizontal surface IHS. Uh, that is what again we have seen that it we go from the inner uh, horizontal surface to the outer horizontal surface and it is extending in the outward direction and it is going up. Then uh, there is a conical surface between the 
the inner horizontal surface and the outer horizontal surface which is extending in the direction of outer horizontal surface in the outward direction from the inner horizontal surface. So, therefore, the height is increasing in this respect and obviously, because this is conical surface this is circular in shape. Uh, here some of the uh, values have been shown in terms of uh, the size, uh, side slope in percent for the transitional surface for the conical surface the height of outer or the upper circular edge of the conical surface above horizontal surface in meters and the radius of uh, inner circular edge conical surface with respect to the airport reference point in meters. So, for the category A the values are 14.3, 5.0 that is in percent 100 meters and 4000 uh, meters that is uh, for the first case. Similarly, for the second case that is B the values remains the same and for C there is a change in the value of the height of outer upper circular edge which becomes 100 meters instead of uh, 75 meters instead of 100 meters. Then for D this value is uh, changing and uh, the value becomes 20 as a side slope for the transitional surface though for conical surface it remains the same. Similarly, there is a change at height of outer or uh, circular edge that is becomes 55 meters and the radius of inner circular edge becomes 2500 meters. Then for E uh, the values for the side slopes becomes the same as D but here in the case of height of outer or upper circular edge it becomes 35 meters and for radius of inner circular edge it becomes 2000 meters. Uh, this is another diagram which is trying to show how uh, the values are going away and it has uh, two sections that is one section being taken in the longitudinal direction in A A and another section is taken as in transverse direction of that that is B B. And, uh, if we look at the diagram with respect to this one, because here we are talking as uh, this is the landing area and this is the takeoff condition. So, the, in this side there is an approach zone and on this side this is a takeoff climb zone. So, that is the difference in this case and this landing strip is being shown or takeoff strip is being shown at the horiz uh, horizontal surface. So, we look at the sectional view of uh, these. In the case of uh, A A which is uh, along the uh, longitudinal direction of the runway strip. So, the runway is at this level then there is a transition condition like this then it becomes horizontal at this position, but it remains uh, a little climbing condition here. So, this is horizontal surface then there is a conical surface. So, the conical surface is also coming at this location too and then there is a take off climb surface which is going upwards like this in a trapezoidal form whereas, here there is a horizontal approach surface being provided. So, that is the sectional view how the elevations are changing as we go away from the runway strip in the outward direction and away from the runway strip. Uh, this is another section which is being cut at the 90 degrees of this one and what we look at that at uh, this point if we are looking at then we will be looking the width of the runway strip. So, at the bottom we are looking at the width of the runway strip. Then there is a transition side. So, this transition side is inclined and therefore, we look at the small transition side. After that transition side then we have the uh, surfaces like inner horizontal surface and we have the conical surface and then we have the outer horizontal surface. Then in the case of the approach zone or in the case of uh, uh, the climb of uh, climb up zone, we will be looking at the loca uh, certain locations where it is increasing upwards and uh, it is increasing in dimension in the width like this and finally, further it increases and becomes much wider and that is what is the overall approach section which we can see like this as being shown here. So, that is how the elevations in this two directions are changing and this is how the heights keep on varying. Uh, this is the overall view of uh, the same uh, airport that is of uh, this is the runway strip being provided and this is how the things are changing if you go this direction if you go in this direction 
uh, we can see this is the approach surface instrument condition, whereas this is the take off climb condition. So, this is provided like this, then there are the transition area being provided at this location, being provided here, being provided here or provided here. And this is 3000 meters for ABC slope is 2 percent, then uh, this is a 45 meter variation in this level. Uh, then slowly and slowly we are moving further, we have with this is 12000 meters for A, B and C with a slope of 2.5 percent that is how it is moving further. This approach surface non instrument runway slope for 2.5 percent at 3000 meters for A, B, 3.3 percent for 3000 meters at C or 4 percent uh, for 2500 meters for D and 5 percent at 1600 meters for E category of uh, runway strip. Here the transitional surface slopes have been shown as 14.3 percent for A, B and C and 20 percent for D and E, this is for this area. And if we look at this uh, inner horizontal surface, then uh, it is varying and it is uh, 2000 meters for E, 2500 meters for D and 4000 meters for A, B and C. So, this is the size which is going in this form and the conical surface is having a slope of 5 percent like this and then again it will be extending in the horizontal direction. Now, we come to the next type of uh, airport obstruction that is objects with the uh, actual heights. Uh, in this case, uh, any object which ex exceeds the certain limiting height above the ground is considered to be an obstruction for air navigation. So, we have to control all these heights. So, any object within 4.5 kilometer distance from the runway end is considered as an obstruction if its actual height is more than 30 meters above the ground or above the level of approach end of runway whichever is higher. So, with respect to the ground or with respect to the level of the approach end of the runway, we have to look at out of these two whatever is higher from there uh, taking as a reference if we consider 30 meter height at a distance of 4.5 kilometer then that is the height of an object which can be there in the vicinity of any airport within this distance scale. Further any object which is located beyond a distance of 4.5 kilometer from the runway end is considered as an obstruction if its height about 30 meter increases by more than 7.5 meter for each additional 1.5 kilometer distance from the runway. So, after 4.5 kilometers for every 1.5 kilometer distance above this 30 meters the value is plus 7.5 meters. So, this is how it will keep on increasing. So, at a value at a distance of 6 kilometers it is 37.5 meters height. So, within 37.5 meters height the development can take place, but nothing can have a height of 37.5 meters or more than that. Similarly, uh, when uh, we reach a uh, value of 15000 meters or 15 kilometers from the runway end, then it uh, uh, should not exceed the 75 meters value, then the, if it is exceeding 75 meters then that is an obstruction. Further, any object which projects above the minimum approach flight altitude or whose height exceeds 150 meter above the ground is also to be considered as an obstruction. So, if we look at the flight altitude of the approaching uh, aircraft to any of the airport and uh, there is any object which is having a height more than 150 meters then that is also considered as obstruction. Uh, this is uh, one of the diagram which tries to show how the airport obstructions can be talked about and this is the runway strip being shown at this location a dark uh, black line and this is the normal flight path of any aircraft. So, the aircraft will be going like this, this way. Now, we are looking at this strip and then uh, uh, this is the clear way for the strip in this direction and uh, this is the distance up to 60 meters we go. Uh, then uh, from this 60 meters uh, here we are talking about a slope 
and this slope is uh, different from different conditions. It is 50 is to 1 for instrument runway, it is 40 is to 1 for non instrument runway in the case of large airports and it is 20 is to 1 for small airports. So, this is the slope at which this obstruction clearance line will keep on moving and uh, there should be always a distance of 15 meters between the obstruction clear clearance line and the normal minimum flight path. So, that is a specification for the safe movement of aircraft. Now, in this diagram we will be looking at uh, the actual heights of the objects with respect to the end of the runway. This is the runway, this is the end of the runway and here there is somewhere the airport reference point with respect to which the elevations are measured. If we go 4.5 kilometers away from the end of the runway strip then this is what is being shown here and this is the natural ground level. So, uh, we take a height of 30 meters and then this is what is defined that this 30 meter should be there. So, this slope comes out to be 1 in 1 is to 50. Then for every 1.5 kilometers 7.5 meters will keep on adding. So, the 7.5 meters are getting adding for every 1.5 kilometers and when we reach a uh, distance of 10.5 kilometers from this point or 15 kilometers from the end of the runway strip, then this height will become a minimum value of 75 meters and uh, the maximum value at this level can be 150 meters. This is how it defines and it will transform into a, a gradient of 1 in 40. So, that is becomes this is the controlling uh, surface and uh, this is the flight path uh, uh, which should be clear of this particular clearance line. So, this is the clearance line and above this clearance line there can be a flight path by which the aircraft can come and uh, may land or may take off. So, that is the same thing which we have discussed uh, in the previous uh, uh, some of the slides. Uh, we look at the another thing in the case of the obstructions that is related to the runway clear zone. Uh, as we have seen in the imaginary surfaces also, there is a clearance zone which is provided at the end of the runway strips and uh, it is starts at 60 meters from the end within approach area. So, this is uh, how it is located, it is up to 60 meters and says uh, it starts and goes within the approach area and the length is determined by the approach surface attaining a height of 30 meter. So, uh, it is dependent on the rate at which the approach surface is going up and uh, if as soon as it attains a height of 30 meters you know, by whatever is the distance in the horizontal direction is that will be the length of that clear zone. Uh, we look at some of the dimensions of the run clear zone that is uh, uh, dependent on this uh, the type of the runway the instrument runway or the non instrument runway. Uh, where W1, W2 or L means uh, W1 is uh, the width of uh, that trapezoidal area being provided at the end of the runway strip after 60 meters and W2 is the uh, width of the clear zone after it has moved a distance of L that is 750 meters in the case of instrument runway strip. So, this is for instrument runways whereas, for the non-instrument runways where the, it is dependent on visibility. If the visibility is as low as 1.25 kilometers, then it is uh, W1 is 300 meters, W2 is 435 meters, and L is 510 meters. Where the visibility is greater than 1.25 kilometers, then it will be reducing to 150 meters, 303 meters, and 510 meters, respectively. Then the approach for utility is uh, 150 meters, then 240 meters and 300 meters respectively in the visual approach for a larger than utility. This is defined as uh, by the values of uh, 150 meters, 210 meters and 300 meters and the visual approach for utility it is defined by the values as 75 meters, 135 meters and 300 meters. Uh, this is the diagram which shows the clear zone. This is the runway strip after 60 meters from the end of the runway strip the clear zone starts. So, this is the width of the clear zone W1 when we are moving in this direction. This is the approach area within the approach area the clear zone is provided. So, this is having a shape of a trapezoid and once we move a length of L it will be having a width W2. So, these are the values which we have seen 
w 1, w 2 and l in the previous discussion only. Uh, this is uh, uh, another uh, figure which is trying to show the approach area along with the uh, clear zone condition area and then the dimensions which needs to be provided. Uh, here we have this value of A, this A is the distance from the end of the runway strip to the start of the clear zone, then what is the width of the clear zone at this position is defined by B. What is the uh, uh, width of this approach zone when it becomes horizontal that is defined as C, then the distance between these B and C is defined as D and then after that when it becomes horizontal, then what is the distance up to which the horizontal is extended is defined as E. And in this is in the elevation condition, so this is 1 in 20 elevation grade being provided is starting from this uh, 60 meters away or distance A away from the end of the runway strip. And this should clear the obstacle being provided in between, so that is how the obstacle is being de defined here. So, the dimensions they are being given in feet are in the case of a small aircraft or in the case of the large aircraft they have been defined here and uh, they vary and what we found is that this distance D is 2250 for a small aircraft, but it is uh, 1500 for larger aircraft. So, this has to take a higher flight path as compared to the uh, smaller aircraft which have less of the propulsive power and therefore, they go at a lower flight path. Then we come to the turning zone, in this case it is used in the case of emergencies for turning of aircrafts and uh, any object which is located within a distance of 4.5 kilometers from the ARP is considered as an obstruction if its height exceeds 51 meters above the ground or the established airport elevation whichever is more. So, with respect to these two values that is the ground level or the airport elevation. Uh, if we take a height of 51 meters at a distance of 4.5 kilometers, then anything which is projecting out of this is uh, an obstruction for those aircrafts which are required to take a turn because of the emergencies during taking off. Then these are used in the case of emergencies for turning of aircraft and any air object which is located beyond a distance of 4.5 kilometers from the ARP is considered as an obstruction if its height exceeds 51 meters plus 30 meters for each additional 1.5 kilometer distance from ARP. So, if we are at a distance of uh, uh, 6 kilometers then it becomes 81 and so on and if it ex exceeds 150 meters with a distance of 15 kilometers from ARP. So, this uh, value remains the same as uh, we have discussed in the previous case. Uh, this is uh, uh, for the turning zone profile from the runway which where it starts from the end of the runway strip and uh, this is what we see is at a con uh, conical condition of 1 is to 7 grade becomes horizontal then uh, again it increases and uh, tries to take a value of 1 is to 20. And this is at a distance of 4.5 kilometer, the surface should have a height of 51 meters above the ground or above the established airport elevation, whatever is higher. Then when we reach a distance of 15 kilometers, then this value becomes 150 meters at a maximum and that is how we just connect the controlling surface. So, this controlling surface is the surface below which all the development should remain and the flight path will be clear of this surface. Now, we look at the joining laws uh, with respect to the different type of the obstructions which we have discussed so far and uh, what we find is that it is related to the height zoning where uh, the heights have to be prescribed on the basis of what we have discussed. These are given with respect to the 4.5 kilometers distance and then further with respect to every 1.5 kilometer distance and find uh, up to a distance of 15 kilometers from the airport. So, that is the area uh, which is going to be affected by the presence of an airport in any city. So, this much area needs to remain uh, with a low uh, profile of development. Then what type of land uses are there? So, there is another zoning law which is related to the land use. 
and it governs the, governs the type of the development which will be taking place at the adjoining areas of the airport. And these are classified as closely related like uh, terminal buildings, parkings, etcetera, because uh, these cannot be removed. They are related totally with the activities which are associated with navigation, where there are some activities which are non avian loose like commercial activities, industrial activities, recreational activities, etcetera. And uh, we have to look at whether these type of activities have been provided in that area, then uh, whether that is permissible or not or that needs to be restricted. Uh, some of the factors which should be considered with respect to the zoning laws are that the legal interest and the rights, uh, whatever laws we are trying to frame out, they should not be such that they hamper sub somebody's right which have been mentioned by our constitution. So, we should not uh, try to create a condition where it becomes a legal matter and the uh, legalities creates a uh, cause of uh, where we have to stop the operations. So the, that should not be the thing. So, the uh, rules should be such that uh, we are not creating any problem to anybody and then the nature of ordinance should be such that uh, uh, it is it is a restrictive condition, but it is not oppressive condition that you are not enforcing something on somebody uh, by your own choice, where the other person cannot at, uh, at any cost uh, accept what you are trying to enforce. So, it should not unreasonable, it should not arbitrary decided and uh, that is what needs to be seen. That is another aspect of zoning law. And then third thing is the zoning map has to be provided. The zoning map defines that what type of activity can take place up to what distance from the airport. So, if we can show that, then that helps the persons to decide that what type of activity they can try within that area if they acquire the land in that area. So, it should show the property line, it should show the land use patterns, it should show the permissible heights. It should show the limits of the zoning laws, etcetera. Apart from these, uh, the another aspect which we will be discussing today is uh, the rules which are related to the flying of the aircraft. Uh, these rules uh, they bring in a certain degree of uh, orderness in the aircraft movement in airspace from the time of takeoff to landing and they maintain the safety by applying separation standards between the aircrafts which are moving simultaneously in the air space. So, that is what is the advantage of having the rules related to flying of the aircrafts. If we have these type of rules, then we can maintain the separation between the aircrafts and uh, we can also maintain the safety of those aircrafts during different type of operations. In this light, there are two types of uh, flight rules available. The visual flight rules, which are in short generally termed as VFR and instrumental flight rules, which are in short again termed as IFR. So, we have a VFR and a FIFR rules. The words VFR and IFR each have two definitions and these are related to flight rules and these are related to the weather conditions. So, these are the two ways by which we can define the both of the things. We we'll look at the flight rules. With respect to the flight rule, the VFR can be defined as the VFR flight rules are established by the Federal Aviation Administration that is FAA and they generally speaking with the exception of certain controlled air space restrictions one can do within reason what one wants, that is what it says, because you are uh, looking at. So, you can do within the reasonable conditions what you are interested to do, but within certain controlled air space restrictions. To fly VFR, a flight plan with a few exceptions is not required, because uh, it is a condition where you are looking at the other and trying to operate your vehicle. So, that is the flight rule condition for VFR. Whereas, in the case of IFR, the I says that the IFR flight rules are uh, again they are being established by the Federal Aviation Administration of US 
and they can be quite complex and may cover most every aspect of the operation. To fly IFR, a flight plan is required because uh, the everything is going to be controlled by the instruments and in this case uh, those flight plans will be required so as to earmark the various specifications which will be required during the flight and that needs to be fed to the instrument. So, that is where it is a complex condition, but then it is a more detailed aspect of operation and take care of each and everything. Similarly, on the basis of the weather conditions, it can be defined. Uh, uh, here we are defining the VFR and VFR is defined as uh, uh, this is being established by the Federal Aviation Regulations, which says that uh, the prevailing flight visibility must be and how far the airplane must remain away from clouds that is uh, what is the uh, being to be defined as far as the flight rule is concerned with respect to the weather condition. The visibility and cloud minimums varies depending on the air space that one is in. Generally speaking, if the ceiling or the broken or the overcast cloud base are more than 1000 feet above the ground, then the visibility is 3 miles or more the weather is VFR. So, that is how it defines in the case of the weather condition. In the case of weather condition again uh, uh, if you have been vigilant and you have read and you have heard the news items also and there is uh, speaking that uh, the flight rules related to the weather conditions on the in, uh, Indian international airports are quite stringent and all the uh, airlines, global airlines are requesting the uh, director general that uh, this should be reduced from a present value of uh, somewhere around 200, 250 uh, or 300 meters to 50 meters. So, uh, that is a distance by which the aircrafts can come very close to each other. Then in the case of IFR, the for the weather condition it is in uh, form of generally speaking if the ceiling or the broken or the overcast cloud base are less than 1000 feet above the ground and oblique or the visibility is less than 3 miles, the weather is IFR. Then that is termed as that if uh, the visibility becomes less than 3 miles, then it is to be controlled by, uh, by the IFR condition. If it is more than 3 miles, then it can be controlled in terms of VFR condition. So, the complete definition becomes that uh, the visual flight rules are a set of aviation regulations under which a pilot may operate an aircraft in weather conditions sufficient to allow the pilot by visual reference to the environment outside the cockpit to control the aircraft's altitude, uh, navigate and maintain safe operation from obstacles such as terrain, buildings and other aircraft. So, that is what is the complete definition which takes into consideration the flight ro uh, rule as well as the weather condition both of the things. Similarly, in the case of VFR, this is uh, the essential collision safety principle uh, guides the VFR pilot and this is termed as C and avoid. So, this is what is the safety principle in VFR condition. You look at and try to avoid the collision. In a strictly controlled airspace, the air traffic control will separate VFR air traffic from all other aircrafts. Uh, the minimum meteorological requirements for VFR are termed visual meteorological conditions. So, if we are operating under VFR conditions, then the meteorological conditions related to that are termed as visual meteorological conditions. So, this uh, VFR or the controlled VFR flight is used in locations where aviation authorities have determined that VFR flight should be allowed, but that ATC separation minima and guidance are necessary in this case. And the CVFR concept is used in Canada and Europe, but uh, not in US where the private pilot certificate itself authorizes the pilot to accept clearances under VFR condition. In the case of IFR, the complete definition is something like the instrument flight rules is a set of regulations and procedures for flying aircraft without the assumption that pilots will be able to see 
and avoid obstacles, trains and other air traffic. So that is a case in this one. And we are not assuming that the pilots will be able to do all these things and therefore the instruments are required to define that. Since navigation and control of the aircraft under IFR is done by instruments, the flying through clouds is allowed. Then commercial traffic that is a flight carrying paying passengers and cargo operates under IFR almost exclusively because if there is passengers or cargo then uh, in that case IFR is generally used. In the case of IFR, there is a certain separation needs to be maintained and that is the distance which is achieved when avoiding obstacles or other aircraft and this is what is separation. In controlled airspace, the air traffic control that is ATC separates IFR aircraft from obstacles and other IFR aircraft by applying separation based on time, distance and altitude differences between aircraft. This is how the two aircrafts are made are separated from each other. It is maybe on the basis of time, maybe on the basis of distance or the difference in the altitude. By relying either on radar or reports of aircraft positions traditionally sent as voice radio transmissions by the pilots basically, but increasingly as electronic data exchanges. Okay, now, uh, slowly and slowly the use of more of the electronic devices is increasing and we rely on the information which is being gathered by such devices and accordingly decide what needs to be done. Uh, in the case of uh, weather condition in for IFR, the one advantage is that its ability to fly an aircraft in uh, instrument meteorological conditions. In the previous case where the meteorological conditions were defined for VFR, it was visual meteorological conditions, here it is instrument meteorological conditions. The weather conditions that do not meet the minimum visibility requirements for VFR, that is what they are being defined as. In such conditions, the pilot will control the altitude of the aircraft by watching the flight instruments and will rely entirely on the ATC for separation. So, ATC the air traffic control system will be providing the information for maintaining the separation between the aircrafts or the obstacles and the altitude will be maintained by the pilot using the electronic gadgets being provided on board. Further, during the flight during FIR, there are no visibility requirements and as such the flying through clouds is permitted. There are still minimum conditions that must be present in order for the aircraft to take off or land. Then there is uh, uh, related to navigation under IFR. Uh, the primary means of navigation is via radio beacons on the ground such as VOR and NDB, although GPS is rapidly taking over. So, um, the, uh, we are relying for navigation most, mostly on the beacons or we are nowadays uh, slowly and slowly moving to the uh, geographical positioning systems being provided for the navigation. In areas of radar coverage, the navigation may be done by increasing radar vectors that is the magnetic headings as signed by ATC. This is one of the primary ways for ATCs to provide separation between aircraft and to sequence them for landing that is how one, or one after the other the landing will take place. Then uh, there are certain IFR procedures, there are three stages to an IFR flight, first is departure, then en route means during the flight and approach. The departures are described by simple departure procedures normally providing an initial heading and altitude or for busier airports by standard instrument departures providing more detailed instructions often accompanied by diagrams or charts. Uh, that is the way how the departures are scheduled. In the case of en route flight, it is defined by IFR charts which shows navigation aids, fixes and a standard routes called airways with minimum safe altitudes for each segment. Then further for the third stage that is approach, these are described by terminal procedures often called approach plates describing a series of steps and segments to make the transition from en route flight to a position where the aircraft can complete a landing visually often from a low altitude and close to the airport. So, that is how the three type of the procedures are defined in the IFR condition. 
uh, this is uh, just uh, the case of IFR where we had an easy to read chart for IFR being provided where it defines the uh, various classes of air space on the basis of entry requirements, the pilot qualifications, the radio communications, the type of VFRs allowed uh, with respect to weather, with respect to flight and uh, uh, likewise values. This is the case being used in the US. Then uh, there is another chart or this is a sectional chart which tries to define this is one airport, this is another airport here. It tries to define the type of the development which can take place and uh, uh, the circles are being provided in terms of the uh, distances, in terms of the altitudes which can be taken by the uh, uh, pilots. So, this is uh, these are provided to the pilots and they know how they move away what needs to be done. So, uh, these are uh, the different things which are done in the case of fly rules as far as the VFR and IFR conditions are concerned. Uh, this is what we have discussed today is uh, that uh, uh, we have looked at the various type of obstructions which can be there for uh, any safe movement of uh, aircraft while landing or take off and these can be segregated as we have seen in the imaginary conditions and, uh, and the objects with the height and then we have looked at the various type of the fly rules. We will be stopping at this position and uh, we will be discussing the certain other aspects in the coming lecture. Till then, goodbye and thank you. Thank you.